Welcome to this episode of Heaven Encounters. My guest today is Karina Martinez. She was a young mother and she died and she met Jesus in heaven. And also she met her dog. So Karina, it's great to have you on our show today. Thank you, thank you, what a blessing, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. And we have a lot to cover in a short period of time. So let's begin with what happened. You were young. You had a young family, and then then uh, something happened. Well, yes, I um, I was at the hospital. I'm going to start, you know, from there. I was at the hospital, you know, trying to figure out why I had such a high blood pressure. I do have a pacemaker, and um, you know, doctors couldn't figure it out why I was. They knew that I was having a blood pressure, obviously, because they're you know keep monitoring it, but they couldn't figure it out why. And uh, you know, I spent the weekend there and I told the doctor, I just want to go home. I just felt that something wasn't right and I just wanted to go home. And, you know, I knew that I was going to die. I just knew, you know, when you know that you know. And so when I came home, I took the medicine that they suggested and I laid in the backyard and immediately um, I started having that amazing encounter. It was the most peaceful moment of my life. Uh, that was the first time I ever felt like true peace uh, and true love, like all this time that I've been seeking love and, and peace, that's the, the day I found it. Um, you know, it, it's um, going in through uh, hearing this amazing voice that I had never heard in the physical, but I had felt like I had heard it forever. And I heard, you know, are you ready to come home? And I said, yes, come out of my body. My spirit started floating, went into this darkness. And from there, I just started having the most amazing uh, encounter. Um, you know, went in through this beautiful golden light, went into heaven. Uh, there was a big old angel in front of me holding something that I thought at first it was a box, but it was a squirrel. So, um, and that going through the entire heavens, I don't remember exactly all of it, but uh, I remember bringing back the tree of life, the river of life. Um, yes, I was asked to come home and I didn't want to go in. And I did ask God, can you show me any family members, you know, here? And the first thing he said, turn to your right. And I saw my dog that had passed away a year um, uh, before I this happened to me. So then um, I ended up having to uh, go passing by. This is the most beautiful part. This is the part that I like to speak because it just came to pass. It's I passed through this area where there's like mountains and there are beautiful kids out there. And I saw three kids, but the first one was a little girl, beautiful curly hair, shiny eyes, just bright, bright, beautiful, beautiful girl. And I saw the other two, you could tell they were twins, <laughs> there were two behind her, but I could not see clearly their face. And I asked these two angels that I with, um, who are they? And they said, they're your grandkids. <laughs> Was like, what? But of course, I didn't say what. I was like, just happy. And I just passed by. I didn't say, let me see them. I didn't talk to them. But I just uh, came back with knowing this. So when I came back, obviously, I did share that to my son, who was not married yet. And I told him, you're going to have twins. You're going to have this. <laughs> he just had, it, had her last uh, 27th of this month, uh, April. Yeah, we may. We may. So, uh, but in heaven, I had uh, seen this, this amazing things that I had never thought or heard of until I learned to uh, go through the Bible. I had difficulties before to understand the Bible or even wanting to read the Bible. But when I started, you know, reading and listening, because I would listen and, and, and also read, uh, I was shocked to know that there was a tree, there was, uh, there was a tree of heaven, there's a river of life, and uh, there's a book of life, because I saw that as well. Um, and, and the things that I just experienced, uh, you know, the, the streets were gold. Um, it, it, it's just the most amazing, amazing thing to to find out the way I did, and then to come back and know that it's all written. It's just it's, it's just amazing and shocking. And um, what else did I saw in heaven was um, the the most beautiful field full of. That's why I have flowers all over. But flowers, but the largest 
the the biggest sunflowers I've ever seen. And I didn't know that were also in the Bible that mentioned sunflowers, sunflower seeds and all that. And I uh, also saw the this beautiful purple flowers that I now see everywhere in summer. And summer is mentioned a lot in the Bible and <laughs> lavender is meant in the scent of it also. So every time I try to, uh, you know, find a scent of oil, I always want to, the scent kind of get close to it but I can never find it. I always think it's lavender. Uh, so that was something else that was kind of shocking to find out that it was, it was written in the word. Uh, and then um, the other thing that I encountered there, uh, which this was not the first time I went to heaven. I'm going to take you to where I was uh, having surgery to remove something and, um, the, the breast implant and I end up going into a room full of organs. So there's there's just things that that I uh, did not know that you know we can pray for and that we can ask for healing. I had no idea that we can that we can you know ask uh, God and you know to give us a lungs if we need it, uh, ask for for a heart if we need it, you know for this healing. Uh, so that was uh, also another uh, beautiful thing that I got to learn uh, that it is in heaven. Heaven is just beautiful. I got to see also the the mountain and the temple. It was it was like a castle, a huge castle. It was white with white pillars as well that I got to see. And in a media thought to be there, it took me to the place. So I got to see just standing outside these amazing pillars. And I found out that the, that's the the temple of God where he he rests. So I was like, wow, this is just amazing. But so far, that's that's uh, mostly what I can remember at this time. But I mean, the the encounters uh, has been nonstop since I've been uh, walking with the Lord. Wow, Karina. So you saw the Lord showed you. Jesus showed you the future of you having your grandchildren yes. in heaven. Mm -hmm. He showed you this place. I guess that's. Uh, you know, kind of like the uh, the prayers, answered prayers for transplants and what have you. And we've had actually a recipient of a transplant who's mm -hmm. been on our program as well. He saw his organ donor in heaven and he saw you uh, or showed you, I'm sorry, the temple mm -hmm. and uh, that you saw the temple. But then you you saw your your little uh, little dog, I think. Uh, yeah. In, I in saw, heaven. I saw two. I saw the two most recent dogs that died was uh, a Labrador and a Yorkie. So it was, it was, it was the most beautiful. You talk about love when you go into heaven and you feel that warmth. Because I always tell people it's like this warmth that you had never felt. Um, but when I saw my dog, not only did he look younger as well the other, but it's just full life in in um, in in that connection. It was just like a complete connection that I had uh, with him. It, it, it was just beautiful. The love, the love. Is, is, I always tell people anything that has a soul and spirit here that is connected with love, you will meet there. <laughs> so uh, definitely was, you know, confirm of that. And yes, my granddaughter, uh, you know, he created us before he formed us in the stomach. So I was like, would that make a lot of sense? Because I was like, I think I got to see her. And, and by this time, I didn't find this out until like, six months ago when I was reading the Bible, like where he's, he's forming us inside the mother's womb. And I'm like, Oh, but that makes sense. He knew us before. So that's why I met there, you know, I met my grandkids there. So it was beautiful. Yes. I often say that, you know, our uh, future is in God's past. You know, he breathed life into every living thing yes. uh, that is of God. So that that's an incredible story. Now you are, Karina, at this time, you have flatlined. You had a pacemaker implant yes. and uh, your heart stopped. Yes. You had two young children. Were you aware of, of I, the, the young family that you were leaving behind at this point? Well, yeah, I have four kids, but two are twins. And then I have a, uh, a so I have a 24 year old, a, a, a 15 year old, and a 14 year old twins. And uh, at that time, when I was uh, having this this motion of leaving my body, I was breathing so fast, and I was in 
I knew that I, something was wrong with my body, but my spirit was almost like my body was shutting down, but my spirit was being activated. <laughs> if, if I, that's the only way I can explain it. My spirit was more alive than my body was. And so uh, it was kind of like a switch, you know, uh, I felt immediately the, the movement and the breathing and I could see it happening and I stopped, I completely stopped. And then I just felt this boy, I heard the voice and I immediately said yes. And then I just started coming out. So yes, I got to see um, my kids inside the house. So I had kind of like the supervision, like super power vision, which I still do kind of like in a way I could see my kids, um, you know, my twins kind of arguing, you know, my mom is not feeling well. I could hear them. And my little boy is like, she's fine. And, you know, my girl is like, no, she's not. And I could hear that conversation. And I could like in my thought, because I couldn't speak, I kept saying, are they going to be okay? So the angel said, yes, it will be okay. So I had my guardian angel with me. And then I got to see my older daughter who had at the time a lot of anxiety attacks in the other room and she was doing this. And when I came back, I asked them, I said, yeah, we were doing that. But um, I saw my husband next to me, never moved uh, from that side. He didn't, never realized that that happened to me. My twin daughter did. Um, so immediately uh, got to see that out of my, I got to see my body, I was like, Am I dead? Like I questioned that. Am I dead? I'm like, well, I am dead. And that's when I realized we don't take anything. I, I got to see my my Apple Watch, who my husband had placed so he can see the the heart rate. Um, and uh, I saw my clothes. I saw my house. I'm like, we don't take nothing. So just immediately went into into that darkness at that moment, at that point. Yes. Mm. And you were with, so Karina, you were in heaven at, at this time. Did, did God give you a choice whether uh, you would return or not? So when I came back from uh, coming from, because I was taken through the whole entire heavens, I could hear the angels say, do you like it? And I said, I love it. I was so excited. And so I came back down and I do remember for sure I was just standing in front of what I felt in my spirit. That was my home, but I don't remember details. And so immediately I heard father saying, do you want to go back? And I say, yes, like, like that. I, <laughs> I regret it now, but it's okay. We, we working over here for him. So, um, and I say, yes. And immediately I was sent back. Um, I felt the presence of the two angels continuously with me, but I turn around and I look at this bright light and I just said, can I share this with everybody? And he says, yes, but they're going to think you're crazy. That's the, the, the two words that he said. And then when I turn around and turn around again, I said, I promise you, I'll bring as many people back home. And I felt like I was home. And I just felt like I was just going to come and run an errand. Literally, I felt that. And so uh, when I turned around, he just said the word, you are awesome. And then he did say, you were looking for me, seeking for me everywhere. You never found me. So he started showing me all the churches I went to, every religion that I possibly went to. So it's like him and I could never find him. So then I fell, I went into this white glass, like a see-through glass, not see-through, but it was a glass. It was white. It was all white. And the glory, and I call it now glory, but I kept saying before, because I didn't know about glory, I just said there was so much power that I felt like I was being pushed. So I, my head was against that, my arms, and I was just trying to get up and I could because that power, that was the language I used to use before, it was so strong. And the more he got closer, the stronger it was. And so I got to see the white robe and I, I just knew. He never said, hi, I'm Jesus or Jeshua. He never gave me a name, but I knew. And even though I didn't know him before, I knew. Like I knew that I knew that I knew. And um, uh, he got closer and I could not see his face. It was all white, uh, like this bright light. And I could just hear his voice through me. Like he was like everything, I could just know. I just know what he was saying and thinking. And he, and I felt 
his pain. Like I felt at a at, at moment, I felt his pain, me saying, I want to go back. But I didn't say, I want to go back. He asked me, are you sure you want to go back? So <laughs> there was two times that. And I said, yes, but I just knew that he needed me to come back. But also I knew that he wasn't happy for me to go because he knew I was going to feel this way now. He knew that I was going to be mad. You know, why you, you gave me a choice? Because I do ask that. So I came back and, um, and you know, of course, I'm going back into, you know, showing you where, where it happened. So we came back. I got to see the white rope, a gold bell, and a purple sash. That's why purple to me, it's all over my house uh, in yellow. The yellow represents the golden, the floors, um, and also the bright, the bright yellow light that pulled me into heaven uh, and, and the sunflowers. And then the purple is the purple sash he had and also the flowers I got to see. Um, but as much as I tried to see his face, because I wanted to see his face, all I could see is just a very, like the shape of the, the beer and then the wavy, but not curly hair. And I don't want to say it was long or short, but it was touching the shoulders. Um, and then I do remember very clearly the hands, because I, I made fun of them. When I got back home, I said, oh my goodness, you had the most dainty hands, like girl's hands, like real skinny, like nice skinny, but you know, <laughs> he didn't have manly hands, basically. Now my husband has like big hands, you know? Well, he had a very dainty, and I didn't see like a hole or anything. That was not really my focus. They were bright, like his face was bright. They were, this was bright. So he was full of this bright light that was all over the place, but I could almost see his form if I'm making any sense. So that that was the most beautiful that that right there is what I always when I pray I go back to to see if I could have him remember or me remember anything he gave me to bring back. But all I can say is tell him I'm coming home. Mm -hmm. I am coming soon. Like I am on my way. So I was like, okay. So that's all that I really uh, experienced on that. And then I came, he was the one who brought me down. Uh, and I asked him, is it going to hurt to go back into the body? Because I knew that that body was not good. And, and he says, it's not going to feel the same. So when I went in, I just shook and it, I was obese in the spirit. I was so fat in the spirit. Like I, I ate so much information. I know he gave me so much. And so I was so big in the spirit, I was not able to fit in my body. And so I vibrated, like I just like trying to fit in like a tight shoe. And then I came back and I started yelling, I just saw heaven. I just came back from heaven. Did you realize I was dead? And I was just like telling him, my husband was like, oh, you're, you're gone crazy. But I was, was able to breathe. And then since then I've been healthy. So, mm. <laughs> so Karina, you, um, you searched a, a number of different religions yes. Yes, uh, during your earlier life and yes. you were a successful model and you were, you know, yes. of, of one might say a worldly nature. Yes. Uh, exactly. And so yes. when you, before you entered into this experience where you, you clinically died, mm -hmm. what was your state of relationship, if at all, with, with Jesus at that, at that time? So uh, before this happened, nothing. I mean, I was trying to find this God that everybody would speak about in every religion. I even went to Mormons. I went with all the respect of every religion, but there was there was nothing. I went to Christianity, you know, Christians, Bapt Baptists. I went to Catholics. I went. I mean, I was raised more Catholic, but I didn't feel that there were saints. Like I couldn't find him. Like I couldn't find truth. Um, I couldn't learn. I wasn't able to even understand the Bible. I wasn't, I wasn't able to, I, I would open the Bible and I would shut it down immediately because I didn't like all the letters would just go crazy on me. Uh, so I never really cared for it. Um, and I didn't know, like I always explain now, God to me was a little God because um, I would ask everybody to pray for me. And the last resort I had was, okay, God, if you're going to heal me, heal me. That's what I would say. But when I met him, now I'm like, oh, everybody needs to stop thinking like this. Everybody needs to know he's bigger than we all think. And, and you should not be asking people to pray for me. You should be asking God, 
bless me and, you know, directly, but, you know, to each is on our butt right now, we really need to focus and sense really the, the relationship and stop the religion. Uh, but yes, I went and seek him. I couldn't find him. I couldn't find, I could not feel what I feel when I speak about him, like this love and the, 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 the power that I felt in that room and that, and I call it a room because it was all white and that floor with Jesus. I don't feel, I never felt that. And so now that I know this, it's, it's amazing. It's just beautiful. It's beautiful. It's the Holy Spirit. It's just amazing. And I know Karina that you are very on fire <laughs> yes, for I Jesus, have. Yeshua. And uh, today uh, you've met him in, in heaven um, and now uh, you're evangel very evangelical. Yes. Um, you have a, a healing ministry as well. So did, uh, did the Lord heal you? I know you had suffered from diabetes yes. and heart disease. So what's, what uh, happened subsequent to your return? So um, I was taking up to 14 medications. Uh, once this happened to me, he says, you healed by my stripes. Um, I ended up having to stop uh, cold turkey, a lot of the medications, and I didn't have no, uh, no reaction to any of that because he told me to stop. So I believed, I trusted. I don't suggest people to do that. I always suggest talk to God. He will give you that peace and so, you know, he will tell you stop. Like you will know that you need to stop. But medication was really killing me. He says that medication is to feed the demons. So don't do it. So I said, okay, so I won't do it. So I stopped and I, uh, I now don't have anything. The only thing I continue to have is the pacemaker, which I asked the doctors to take it off, but they don't want to, they don't, they think that I'm going to sue them. I could have before. Why would I do it now? Um, so I would, you know, God said not, not to do that. So I, you know, not to sue them. So I never sue them for a misdiagnosis of a pacemaker but um i don't i don't take anything anymore so now i speak healing into people um and i just teach you know not teach because he is the teacher but i do share the testimonies he's been teaching me through all the things that i go through for example you mentioned yes i i did modeling swimsuit modeling at balls a lingerie i did I was a fashion stylist, so I was always, always in fashion, the earrings, the makeup, coloring my hair, I mean, extensions here and there, and, you know, changing my body. But as soon as he, he got me, it started little by little. It wasn't like, all oh, one day, cutting us like perfect. No, it was like the Holy Spirit was teaching me with, by chunks. It still does. It's still teaching my little me. And so when I learn something, I'm like, oh my God, gosh, you know that this is, and it is in the word. And I kind of like, you know, it's, it's all in there and I'm shocked to find it. So um, I don't wear no makeup anymore. I don't color my hair anymore. I don't care about clothing. I don't really care about any of this physical stuff. I just really want people to know that the Holy Spirit changes us um, and, and that we need to come to, I, I don't like to use the word repent, but return to your father, return to God, return to what you know that you have within you, which is the spirit, the spirit of the Lord. So just know that that's really, really the most important part is to get closer to God and, and, and let go of the world and come to him. So. Wow. So you had, a, I guess, the opposite of a makeover in heaven. You had to make, maybe make, uh, make under, I don't think there's a word for it, but it totally transformed your life. Yes, it did. And what, you know, there are a number of things that you observed in heaven and you felt uh, that, that uh, changed you, transformed you. Yes. Is there one thing in particular in heaven, if you were to convey that to our audience, mm -hmm. that you think the audience needs to know based on what your experience is that you've shared subsequent to, uh, to your return from there? Yes, I find out that loving yourself, like loving who you are and who God created in you, not the changes that you have done physically, uh, loving, accepting who you are and, and, and bringing the best of you is the most important about it because I hated it myself, even though I tried my best to look the best. 
I believe when you start loving yourself, you start loving everybody else the same way. You start having that compassion that Jesus has for us and the understanding and the fruit of the spirit. All nine fruits will come with it. I feel the Holy Spirit is telling you this. So when you be, when you become the nine fruit of the spirit within you, you start bearing fruit. You start giving patience. You can start giving kindness. And the people kind of react to it. When you act um, mean to people, they're going to act mean to, the, to you. So if you kind, if you sweet, and, and of course we become sensitive, we become more sensitive. You know that now, but it, it's, but it's okay because they're not hurting us. They're hurting Jesus. But you start feeling those emotions of the Lord in you. So it, it, it's, it was so beautiful to know who I was. And that's why I love how I look. I don't care what people think of me anymore. I don't, I really don't. If they say your hair look whatever. And I'm like, okay, look, Lord, do you like it? Yes. Okay, good. We're good. Let's go. <laughs> you know, but I don't, don't care for what people say anymore, but what God says. Yes. Well, yeah. um, that, that's, that's a lesson I think for each of us in terms of impressing God versus the world. Amen. Um, and and what you experienced uh, was two of your two of your dogs that have gone on. I think that's also unique to your account in uh, heaven. You must be a dog lover. Yes, I have three. Now. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> three so i got three even though my husband didn't want to but for some reason you know i, I believe god made that happen because my husband did not want anymore but <laughs> now he loves him we know from psalms uh you know he he gives us the desires of our heart and you know that was my experience in heaven and seeing my little uh oh. boyhood dog was uh, when jesus said uh see i give you the desires of your heart and he gave you those desires of your heart and, uh, and i love plants now i'm planting i'm planting like there's no tomorrow i keep i keep building all these beautiful gardens all over the place i've been helping people with that too i'm like come on i'll do it i'll do it <laughs> even though it's 100 degrees outside i'll do it <laughs> well it sounds like heaven never left you no it stayed with you yes amen yes <laughs> is is it um and some some people have said that heaven is more real than this world it is is that would that would you echo that sentiment or uh... it, it truly it truly is to me everything here dies over there nothing dies so definitely this is very temporarily very uh, some things are fake obviously technology has uh, has made that happen so yes heaven is definitely way more alive than earth and it's heaven and earth I believe that I got to see more than anything because <laughs> it's all together it's beautiful yes. Well, I know, Karina, having uh, followed you in your ministry, that uh, you've had a very profound impact on so many people. And you've had a, a complete transformation uh, that you've described in your spirit, but also in your, in your overall nature as a whole. Well, I wish we could spend more time, but uh, we've come to an end, Karina. Thank you so much for joining us on our show today. Thank you. And so the great news is if you are in Christ Jesus, be of good cheer because heaven is in your future. Until next time, take care and God bless. Thank you for watching this episode of Heaven Encounters. If you'd like more information, you can go to Randy K Ministries at randyk.org. Take care and God bless.